A while back, I got an email from a homeowner who was puzzled. Uh, they have a home, it uh, doesn't have a basement, but it's a slab on grade arrangement. So that means the house is built on concrete that's been poured directly on the ground. This house has in-floor heating, but there's no insulation in the concrete floor. And the problem was that every summer, the whole house smells musty. And the only way this homeowner could solve the problem was by running their dehumidifier all the time. That's an isolated incident, but it points to a much larger and much more common dynamic, especially as it applies to basements, even though this house didn't have a basement. But what happens in the summer is you have warm, um, moist air, humid, compared with the ambient temperature in the summertime. So the, the warm, moist, humid air makes its way down, in the case of this homeowner, through some carpet and comes in contact with the cool concrete floor. That causes the temperature of the air to drop and the relative humidity to rise and you get actual minute amounts of condensation happening within the carpet pile and against the concrete floor. And that's the problem. So to solve the problem, you've got to stop the ability of that air to come in contact with the concrete floor. I mean, that's one solution. The solution to this homeowner was to run the dehumidifier to keep the humidity level down. And that's a good idea. In fact, you shouldn't really be using a dehumidifier for that. An air conditioner is much better. You get a lot more drying power for a given amount of energy put into an air conditioner compared with a dehumidifier. But still, the best solution is to make it impossible for that air to come in contact with a concrete floor. It applies to above ground situations like this, like this reader, but also and much more commonly to basements. And that's where the use of a basement subfloor like this comes into play. This is Drycore. It's probably the most widely available basement subfloor product. And it goes on like this. So we've got the dimpled plastic layer touching the concrete, raising the panel above the floor a bit. So you have a, a bit of a space here. Now in the case of a basement, the advantage there is that if there's a small water leak, half an inch or less, then you're really not going to notice that it's not going to be a problem. That leaked water can still make it to a floor drain somewhere or even just seep right through the concrete, which is fairly porous. Um, so it protects against small amounts of moisture leakage, but more importantly, this plastic layer, you know, quite thick really, functions as a vapor barrier. So with this on the floor and say carpet or hardwood floor on top of it, the warm, moist air in the summertime can't get through. It can't get through to the concrete. It's, there's an insulation action there caused by the airspace, but then there's also a vapor barrier action as well that stops that dynamic of the air making it through, cooling down, dropping down below the dew point, and leaving some moisture behind. Of course, moisture triggers mildew and mold growth. The drier, the better when it comes to your home. And uh, basement subfloor tiles like this help to short circuit that dynamic of condensation, mold growth, and poor indoor air quality. That's really what this comes down to. I mean, nobody likes a musty smell in their house. That's unpleasant. But the musty smell is also indicative of lower than it should be indoor air quality. And that's the main concern. That's the main reason for solving this problem.